welcome to Surrey TV. I'm Victoria Durant and this week we're at London Bus Museum at Brooklands near Weybridge. Sandra Town Centre will be launching free Wi-Fi availability in early 2014. Rushmore Borough Council have teamed up with three local partners and a specialist Wi-Fi company to cover the town centre with access for all. The idea has been brought from the desire to attract more visitors to the town centre and to have them stay longer. The cost of the project will be shared equally between the Prince's Mead and the Mead shopping centres, along with the district council. The project is due to be launched in the second week of January 2014, and it is hoped that a similar partnership can be created in nearby Aldershot in the following months. Craft in Focus returns to Wisley this month. The Craft and Design Fair is a popular annual event at the Royal Horticultural Society's flagship venue in Surrey. The fair runs from the 27th of November to the 1st of December and when you buy a craft fair ticket you get free admission to the garden which will be full of winter colours at this time of year. The fair features 160 of the UK's finest contemporary craft workers and artists. The event is held in heated marquees so you can enjoy the fair no matter what the weather. There will be entertainment throughout the event and the restaurants and cafes will have seasonal food on offer. The craft fair opens from 9am each day with late night opening on Thursday. The relaxed atmosphere of the craft fair offers a refreshing new approach to Christmas shopping. The organisers of Surrey's very own Wings and Wheels Air and Car Show have won an award from the charity Help for Heroes for outstanding support to our wounded. Wings and Wheels is promoted by Dunsfold Park Limited to assist the fundraising efforts of Brooklyn's Museum Trust and Help for Heroes. The Help for Heroes Hero Awards were started in 2010 by Bryn and Emma Parry, co-founders of the charity. They wanted to recognise those fundraisers who had gone above and beyond in support of Help for Heroes. Jim McAllister, Chief Executive of Dunsfold Park Limited said, It was an honour and a privilege to be in the company of so many wonderful groups and individuals who have made such an important contribution to Help for Heroes. We thoroughly enjoy supporting the charity, which has become an integral part of the Wings and Wheels team, and we are proud to accept the award on behalf of everyone involved with the show. Next year's Wings and Wheels event will be on the 23rd and 24th of August. We'll announce how and where to purchase the tickets in due course. Southwest Trains have released their engineering work schedule for the Christmas holiday this week. The Christmas Works programme of essential maintenance on their railway lines and at their stations will begin on the 24th of December and will run to the 2nd of January 2014. Both Network Rail and Southwest Trains will do everything they can to minimise disruption to their services over the festive season, but travellers are encouraged to check the schedule at southwesttrains.co.uk forward slash Xmas ENG 2013. Colin here from the Bus Museum is going to tell us a little bit about some celebrity buses I believe that you've got here. Yes Victoria, certainly. The bus over my shoulder here um, has featured in Downton Abbey, just finished on ITV. We've got other buses that have starred in The King's Speech, Jericho, one of our newer buses, 50 years old has um, featured in an education and also in Made in Dagenham and we've also featured in Nanny McPhee. Wow that's a great one for the kids. Absolutely. The award-winning Lightbox Gallery in Woking is preparing for their highly anticipated Renoir in Britain exhibition. It will tell the story of how some of Renoir's most significant work came into this country. The exhibition is unique in that all the artwork has been sourced from Britain. Taking you through a chronological path of nearly 50 years of his work, the exhibit includes paintings, sculptures and works on paper. For those who are unfamiliar with the French Impressionist's artwork, his paintings are known by their vibrant light and saturated colour. The Lightbox Gallery and Museum, which opened in 2007, is located in Woking Town Centre and welcomes visitors of all ages. Its long list of awards include Museum of the Year and winner of the Arts Fund Prize in 2008. The Renoir in Britain exhibition opens on the 8th of February 2014. To find out more, visit thelightbox.org.uk. We'll have more on this story at the beginning of the new year. 
Records in Tunsgate, Guildford will be celebrating a milestone of business in the town with a record fair at the Keep Pub on the 30th of November. Chantelle went to meet Ben at his shop. Hi, I'm here with Ben Darnton from Ben's Records. Now, everywhere I look, it is absolutely incredible. I mean, it's completely covered with amazing records, CDs, tapes, posters, everywhere. And the mm -hmm. place looks just superb. I was just thinking to myself, it must have taken you so long to collect this. Yeah, well, it's always been my passion. And, uh, you know, I've been here 20 years and the stock builds up as you go along. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm buying stock daily. At the moment, we've got a recession on. People are moving house, downsizing maybe. So I've got lots of stock coming in. Yeah, yeah. And is this 20th balloon marking 20 years here? 20 or? years survival here at Five <laughs> Tonsgate, yeah. Um, I've done it all my life. I was 13 when I started working in a second-hand record shop in Godalming, uh, yeah. which is a small little back room, and then it just went from there, and I did it full time after going to college. So absolutely is. Yeah, and yeah. You do other things apart from just having this store. You're also doing a fair. Yeah. Which yeah. I have this uh, leaflet for, mm. and that's going to be at the Keep. Yeah, is the, that right? the Keep Pub, just down the road in Castle Street, opposite the Castle Grounds. Okay. Um, it's on the third of November. It's free entry. Uh, Ten stalls of records mainly. Uh, anyone can turn up. Friends, yeah. you know, you can come have if you like. Drink. Yeah, why not? <laughs> or two. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and maybe even buy record as well but no I'm looking forward to it it's going to be 20th anniversary of this shop great and so mm. one question for you mm. if you could pick one record as yep. your absolutely favorite record okay. what would it be the favorite record I've got Chantel in the shop today is yeah. all things must pass by George Harrison which features my sweet lord what is life but it's mm -hmm. just fantastic and I played it three times today I need to tune into that yeah yeah okay <laughs> all right well it's been fantastic mm. talking to you Ben and it's back to you Victoria the Guildford Fringe Theatre Company will be launching their Christmas Panto next month. Cinders, their adult panto, will run from the 12th to the 21st of December in the back room at the Star Inn just off the High Street in Guildford. Chantelle met Nick Wishner from the Fringe yesterday. So, hi Nick. Hello. You're the artistic director of the Guildford Fringe Theatre Company. Yes. Tell us more about the company. Uh, we set up in 2012 when we performed our first musical, which was The Last Five Years, written by Jason Robert Brown, two-handed musical, uh, a song cycle, um, of a, a story about a relationship between two people falling in and out of love. Uh, since then, we've produced uh, two other plays. We've done Mears a Penguin, which is a three-handed, four-handed comedy, and Owls in the Moss, which is a three-handed psychological thriller. And we've also produced Guildford Fringe Festival, which ran for the first time July just gone. And Guildford Fringe Festival, that's like the Edinburgh Fringe Festival? Is that what you're yeah. going for? Yeah, well, it? I'd it's love it to thing. be the same size. It's, <laughs> it's a much smaller version of Edinburgh Fringe. Basically, um, it's set on the same business model as Edinburgh Fringe. It's an open access arts festival. Uh, the July just gone, we've had something, at least one show on every single night of July. Um, anything ranging from bands to straight theatre, musical theatre, debate groups, quizzes, anything with any kind of arts kind of yeah. surrounding. And now you've got Cinders is what you're working towards yes. over the Christmas Cinders, period. Cinders, the adult panto, yes. The adult panto. Can you just clarify for me? So adult panto, it doesn't mean that you're completely sort of nude and things like that. Well, not you well, personally. Well, it could be. Depends on how many tickets you want to buy. I can do anything you want. But more of an innuendo kind <laughs> yes. of... Absolutely. When, I, when it's an adult panto, I, I, in my experience of panto as an actor, um, is kind of all pantos have got an underlying adult humour, but yeah. it's hidden. With ours, it's just not quite so hidden. So it's naughty rather than rude. So don't think Freddie Starr. Right. And we can get tickets for this online Absolutely. on your website, which yeah. is? guildfordfringe.com, or you can pop in and see the nice ladies up the high street in the Tourist Information Centre. Brilliant. Well, it's been such a pleasure seeing you next No, thanks for having and, me. And uh, it's back to you, Victoria. The Prognosis will be performing at Friends Life in Dorking tonight, Friday the 22nd of November. The progressive rock group will be playing tracks by Pink Floyd, Genesis and a host of other bands from those crazy days when rock ruled the airwaves. The Prognosis and Friends charity gig will be in support of Hope and Homes for Children and Beatitudes Dorking. Tickets are £10 and available on the door. If you grew up when prog rock was king, this night will be a wonderful trip back when music meant something and the artists kept their clothes on. The Guildford Flames won both their games last weekend, including their top of the table clash with Manchester Phoenix. On Saturday, they beat Telford Tigers in a close battle that ended in a 6-3 win for the Flames. On Sunday, in the biggest game of the season, the Flames were victorious in a 4-2 victory over joint league leaders Manchester Phoenix. The Surrey team are now leading the league by two points. 
I'd like to now introduce you to Guy Marriott. He's the chairman of the London Bus Museum. Hi, Guy. Victoria, hello. Welcome to our museum. Thank you. And tell us a bit, a bit about the museum. Uh, well, it's the largest collection of London buses uh, in the world. Uh, we, they date from the 1920s up to today. And uh, some buses are still in store awaiting restoration, but those that are restored are here in our new museum hall and they all operate, they all work. You can see them all on the road from time to time. Oh wow, and I understand you've not been here that long? Uh, that's true. Uh, the museum itself is some 40 years old. Uh, we were on a site at Red Hill Road in Cobham and we moved here to the Brooklyn site in August 2011. Well, it's a great place and fantastic for children and every little boy's dream, it, isn't it? The, the buses. It's a great museum for, for people of all ages who remember the buses that they worked. Sorry, remember the buses that they travelled on when they were young or today. Oh well, thank you very much, Kai. Good pleasure. The team and I have had a busload of fun today here with all the volunteers at the bus museum. Take care and enjoy the county. Southwest Trains have released their engineering work schedule for the Christmas holiday this week. The Christmas Works programme of essential maintenance on their railway lines and at their stations will begin on the 24th of December. <laughs> when I wash my hair, I use WD-40. <laughs> Fantastic. That's brilliant. That's great. Excellent. So do the do the, the smile. We'll leave a gap for the smile, and then go. It's a wrap. And then go. <laughs> Ready? Go for Tell it. Me one. Three, two. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> right, Brilliant. Go. Perfect.